Hello everyone and welcome to Financial Accounting. In this video we're going to go over chapter 1 which is the introduction to accounting and business. So basically we're just going to give a brief idea about uh, what's financial accounting and uh, how accounting is used in businesses. So the first learning objective in, in this chapter is to understand the nature of business and accounting. So what is a business? A business is an organization which basic resources, which we call them the inputs, uh, like the material, labor, are assembled and processed to provide goods and services which are the outputs to the customers. So businesses, unlike non-for-profit businesses, they want to make profit. It's not like charitable organizations where they don't care too much about having a profit at the end of the year. A business wants to make profit. And what is a profit? Profit is the difference between the amounts received from customers for goods or services and the amounts paid for the inputs used to provide the goods or services. So basically, uh, in non-for-profit organizations, they like to call it the surplus, which is made basically the difference of what we receive and what we have to pay in order to generate the revenue or the income that's, that's needed for the business. So a major thing that I want you to understand in this um, coverage, we mainly focus on businesses. So businesses are profit-seeking organizations. They want to make profit. So um, that's different from other organizations or charitable organizations where uh, profit is not their main purpose. The three types of businesses that we're going to be covering in this chapter or in actually in the textbook. The first one is service businesses. The second one is what we call it retail businesses. And finally, we have manufacturing businesses. So what's the difference? A service business provides services rather than product to customers. Uh, something like um, a restaurant, okay? Even though they provide a product, but at, this, at the same time, they, o they also provide the service of uh, like providing the food for you. That's the main thing. It's, it's not like a grocery store. A grocery store would be an example for a retail business. Another example of service business would be like uh, airlines, like, an, uh, like a, when, you, when you go in a flight, uh, the main purpose of, uh, is to get from point A to point B, or let's say from Los Angeles to Chicago or New York. Uh, so that's, that's a service that's provided by, by the airlines. Uh, but what if they provide meals? That's, that's not really their main business. They, the main business is just that they, it, which is transportation. They, they move you from one spot to another. But the meals is just something additional. So we don't, we don't really focus on these kind of subsidiary um, or additional kind of um, businesses that a business would have. So the main focus here is on the main business. How about retail business? These are businesses that would sell products uh, they purchase from other businesses to customers without any form of transport transformation. So uh, they take uh, a product, maybe they buy them in bulk, and then they um, retail them to, uh, to the customers. Example would be something like Walmart or Target. Um, they don't really uh, manufacture anything. It may maybe they have like their own products under their name, but that's, that's a different thing. But the main purpose is just to buy things in bulk and then they... Uh, sell it to their customers. Then there are manufacturing businesses and these are businesses that change basic inputs into products that are sold to customers. So they, they buy raw material, they, um, they buy some supplies and then they transform it into a product and that's, that's the main difference between um, like a retail business and manufacturing. In manufacturing they transform uh, items or, or inventory or inputs into a product. So I hope this gives you an idea. Um, we're going to cover most of these businesses, but our main focus would be on service businesses and retail businesses. Manufacturing businesses would be more the focus of the second part of, uh, of this class, which is uh, 1B. <clears throat> so here we have uh, an example where you see a company where they have business activities, they have financing activities, they have investing activities, and they have operating activities. So um, all of these are considered to be the different cycles within any business. So within the financing activities, the main focus here are the creditors and owners. For investing activities, these are building and equipment contractors. And then operating activities, these are the customers and the suppliers. 
So later on, we're, we're actually towards the end of um, the syllabus, we're going to cover um, something called the statement of cash flows. And the statement of cash flows is divided into these three areas. We have the operating activities, we have the investing activities, and then we have the financing activities. And all of these are part of the business activities. <clears throat> so what is the role of accounting in business? Accounting is very important for any business because uh, we like to call it the language of business. This is how people kind of understand if a business is successful or not. And we've heard about companies that are booming, uh, companies like Tesla, Amazon, and Apple, and some other companies. Um, these companies are successful, and that's translated into numbers. Some other companies failed over time, and again, the numbers showed that they're not doing very well. So this is very important to focus on, on the numbers, which is the accounting side of a business, to be able to understand whether the business is successful or not. So the role of accounting in business is to provide information for managers to use in operating the business. That's, that's the main purpose. So if, if we need more resources in this division, if we need more help in this division, then, then, then the accounting numbers would tell us. If, if a division is not doing very well, then maybe we should, we should get rid of it. And that can be translated based on the accounting values. So accounting provides information to other users in assessing the economic performance and conditions of the business. Other users like investors and creditors, and even the government. Accounting can be defined as an information system that provides reports to users about the economic activities and condition of a business. So basically, accounting is an information system. And by the way, nowadays, accounting relies heavily on information technology because IT or computers is part of how we do accounting. And it's very important in generating these kind of reports that would be helpful for the users to make economic decisions. So how accounting can be an information system. So you see here, uh, we first need to identify the users. We need to assess the user's information needs. Then we need to design the accounting system. Then we need to record economic data. And finally, we need to prepare the accounting uh, reports. Um, the accounting reports is what we call it the, the final product of accounting, which we refer to sometimes as the financial statements. So. This is what accountants do. They need to identify who's going to use this account information. Are, are they people inside the business or outside the business? And then we need to assess um, the, what kind of information they need. Okay? And then based on that, we design the accounting system, we record economic data on a regular basis, and finally prepare our final product, which is what we call the accounting reports or the financial statements. <clears throat> Some kind of a side discussion here, but it's very important, is the role of ethics in accounting and business. As you know, accounting is just presenting the performance of the business on reports. And it's very important that the accountant who prepared these financial reports would be a very honest person, a very ethical person. Because if you're not representing the truth on these reports, then you're misleading the users. And that's part of the ethical need for the profession. So as an accountant, I need to be very ethical in presenting the real situation for, uh, for any business. So accountants must behave in an ethical manner so that the information they provide users with will be trustworthy and therefore useful for decision making. Ethics are moral principles that guide the conduct of individuals. Unfortunately, business managers and accountants sometimes behave in an ethical manner. So we don't live, live in a perfect world. We know every now and then there are some people who might do wrong things. And that's what we call it unethical behavior. And, and again, the purpose of this kind of side discussion is to make you aware of the importance of, of being ethical in this kind of profession. And of course, it's not just profession in, in business in general, but, but in accounting, it's very sensitive. And I think my role and, and, and the textbook role here is to uh, make it clear that it's very important to be ethical. So failure of individual characters sometimes is a reason for unethical behavior. So we have um, managers sometimes who are not honest, they, they are greedy. So ethical, ethical managers and accountants are honest and fair. However, managers and accountants often face pressures uh, from supervisors to meet company and investors' expectations. 
So uh, the, the, what they say sometimes, if you cannot make it, make it up. Uh, and that's, that's a bad, wrong thing. People should avoid that. And I'm, I'm sure many of you would be accountants in the future. So make sure that you keep this in mind. I have to be an honest person. I have to, be, to act as an ethical person because uh, what I have in the reports represents it, like many people are going to, to, to rely on. Another thing is the culture of greed and eth ethical indifference. Like people don't care and they are a little bit greedy and, and that, that can be also a problem. And, and in the U.S. And, and worldwide there are many examples of people who are greedy in business and in accounting and they misled um, many other people around them. So by their behavior and their attitude, senior managers set the company culture. And they always say setting the tone at the top, if people are not really honest like the, the, I mean the, the senior managers, if they're not honest, that would be reflected to every single person within the business. There are a few cases that are very well known in the United States. So we'll just go over a few cases like uh, a company called Countrywide, which I believe was a mortgage company, Enron, which, is, which was um, like an energy providing company. And they used to give, uh, provide electricity to different, uh, different companies in the United States, uh, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Xerox. Uh, these are some of the very well-known uh, cases in accounting where uh, there was some kind of fraud going on. So if we go to Countrywide, the CEO misled investors. So for example, the CEO paid $22.5 million and was permanently banned from serving as an officer or director of a public company. So that was the consequences of misleading the investors. For Enron, they fraudulently inflated their financial results and they did that to mislead the users or the investors of the company. So what happened? The company went bankrupt and senior executives criminally convicted more than 60 billion in stock market losses because the company filed for bankruptcy and all the shareholders lost their investment. Goldman Sachs misstated and omitted key facts from investors. So the company to settle that, they agreed to pay $550 million in fine and, and, and reformed business practices. Um, Wells Fargo, which is a very well-known bank, uh, improperly opened customer accounts without their permission. So we heard about that scandal like a few years ago. So they opened a lot of additional accounts to show that they are uh, growing and they're getting more successful. So what, what were, were the consequences? The CEO fined $17.5 million and banned from banking industry for life. For Xerox, uh, they recognized $3 billion in sales prior to uh, when it should have been uh, recorded. And the consequences of that, $10 billion fine to the SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission. Six executives forced to pay $22 million. People think, what is recognizing like sales prior to um, its recording time? Uh, in accounting, this is unethical, and we'll talk about that later on in Chapter 3 and 4. So, uh, now let's briefly talk about careers in accounting. What, well, after I get an accounting degree, and I know many of you maybe are business majors, and uh, maybe accounting is not your, your ultimate destination, but, but maybe some of you would, would consider accounting as a career. So, if you become an accountant, what are the potential career paths and salaries? So you can work in private accounting, and private accounting, this is where you work in a company. So accountants employed by companies, or it could be working in the government, or for non-for-profit entities. And careers would be things like working as a bookkeeper, and usually that's like a starting point, or you can work as a payroll clerk, you can also work as a general accountant. Uh, this is a person who takes care of the general transactions and the day-to-day -day businesses, or day-to-day -day recording of the accounting of the, the business transactions. Uh, you can also work as a budget analyst. You can work as a cost accountant. You can work as an auditor, which we call it internal auditor in this case, because you work in the company. We can all, also work as an IT auditor, or information technology auditor. Um, the salaries are really, really, uh, in these kind of areas, is, um, I think it's good, uh, based on 2020, which is two years ago. Um, the starting salaries, uh, and again, this is just starting salaries. The starting point, you start as $40,000 all the way to sixty-five. So there are some areas that are much more profitable than others. 
Do you need some kind of certifications? Uh, yes. So, for example, if you want to work in, as a payroll clerk where you prepare the salaries and the payments for the employees in the business, uh, it's good to get something called a CPP, which is Certified Payroll Professional. For other positions like uh, budget analyst, cost accountant, uh, something like a Certified Management Accountant, uh, CMA, is would be uh, an additional um, value for you. Uh, you can also have a CIA if you want to work as an internal auditor, which is a certified internal auditor. And if you want to work in uh, information technology auditing, then you will need something like a certified information systems auditor certificate. On the other side, you can also work in public accounting. And in public accounting, um, you work in a CPA firm. And you don't belong to a company itself, but you, you belong to an accounting firm that would serve other businesses. So these are accountants employed individually or within a public accounting firm in audit and tax services. That's mainly what they do. Um, the starting salary is, I think it's good, it's 49000 and usually it goes um, up very quickly. Um, you need a certification that's very prestigious for accounting professionals, which is called a Certified Public Accountant or a CPA. So let me stop at this point. In the next video, we're going to go over something called GAP or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles and get more idea about accounting.